Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is our best gaming CPU 2024, and this is our very first episode of the series this year. We're gonna take a look at the entire CPU market, including all the CPUs that just launched to figure out the best gaming CPU 2024. We'll start off with the budget level at the mid range and the high end. And we'll also take a look at the best creator and multi-threaded workload CPUs as well. Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. Great news. Micro Center has 26 US store locations with Miami, Florida opening in 2024. It's build your own month at Micro Center with great deals like this Ryzen 7800X3D combo with B650 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of fast DDR5 RAM for just $499. Or this deep cool 360 millimeter ARGB liquid cooler for just $99. Or jump into 1440p gaming with this Acer 165 Hz monitor for just $179. Want to get into 3D printing? New in-store customers can get the Creality Ender 3 S1 for just $149. Check out the great deals using the links in the video description. Let's jump into CPU prices in 2024 and we're going to start off on the AMD Ryzen side. Let's start off with the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs and this is the one that people are really focused on right now. We'll talk about some of those Intel 14 gen, especially the new ones that just launched in kind of stealth launched in January that a lot of people aren't even talking about right now. But we got to start off with one of the more popular, actually probably the second most popular CPU out there. That is the Ryzen 7600 and 7600X. Remember, no real difference between those two CPUs. Right now, the 7600, the non-X version, selling for 209 over at Newegg with the promo code there, $7 off, that gets you 209. It was selling at Amazon, completely sold out. It was 199, 199 uh, continuing that Black Friday pricing. So fingers crossed that AMD is gonna keep that price around 199 for that CPU. It's a really good value. We got the 7700 and yes, look, it's got another price price cut down to 299 back where it was in November. And that's actually for the 7700 non-X, which is actually the better value that included Wraith Prism Cooler is a lot more sturdy and a lot better cooler than that tiny little Wraith Stealth Cooler that comes with 7600. That's why this is a great value at 299. But of course, it's really competing with itself here because it's got the 7800X 3D. Speaking of the 7800X 3D, price is down to 369. It had gone all the way down during Super Black Friday and holiday sales, 348. That was an insane price for that CPU, but it has come back up. It is the number one bestseller on Amazon though. The number one bestseller on Amazon continues to be 369 right now. It's a pretty good price. It's lower than it was in November before Black Friday, but of course, 14 gen kind of fell on their face. So I feel like AMD's just like, we're gonna sell the CPU for whatever we feel like. Punching quickly through the higher core count CPUs, you can see AMD continues to cut prices here. We'll probably see why in just a moment we go through the best gaming CPU in 2024 and the best production CPU in 2024. A lot of these CPUs like the 7900, 7900X, even the 7900X 3D, 7950X, kind of a little bit out of water right now, but we will check those out in just a moment. But the pricing is down pretty much across the board, except for the X3D version of the 7950X. Let's jump into those more budget-oriented Ryzen 5000 series CPUs on the AM4 socket. And there were tons of launches, tons of launches on AM4 in just the last month and a half. We're gonna go through the performance of all these CPUs, including the Ryzen 8000 series APUs. You're probably, Jason, what happened at Ryzen 8600G, 8700G, 8500G? There's a reason I'm not listing them here. There's also a reason I never listed the 5600G the 50, or no longer list the 5700G or the 5700. We'll talk more about that in the new section. These are not gaming CPUs. They're not gaming CPUs and they're not good value either. But let's talk about the ones that are. Right now, the Ryzen 5500 back in stock, $98. Love to see it over at Amazon right now. Now this CPU had completely sold out over the holiday shopping period. It was $120. You just wouldn't buy it for that price because it, you know, once they get down to almost no quantity, they just jack the price up on you. Then we've got the Ryzen 5600, yeah, it's up a little bit from its Black Friday price of 129, but not much, it was 135. A couple of days ago, actually, it was $131. So that CPU, two thumbs up there, continues to float right around you know, 134, $135. And it's got quite a good motherboard advantage over its competitors. The Ryzen 5700X up to 180, and that's kind of a, a little bit of a head scratcher. We'll see where that falls in our best gaming CPU and our best production CPU later in the video. But let's talk about the one that everyone's super interested in, the Ryzen 5700X 3D. Actually selling for 247, it's already gotten, a, let's call it a slight price discount, right? You can buy it right now over at Amazon. We'll see where this stacks up, both a new system build as well as an upgrade path for a lot of you AM4 
four owners out there, maybe on an older AM4 CPU, but 247, pretty good price. I will say if you're interested in the 5800X 3D, the price has kind of plummeted down to 303 right now. I don't know if these are the last of them. They keep selling out temporarily. It's possible that AMD is actually running out of the 5800X 3D, and that's maybe why they introduced the 5700X 3D. This is the kind of stock that wouldn't quite hit those frequencies. And now they're selling off of 5700X 3D. Just kind of an interesting $303. That's not a big price gap between the two. Let's jump quickly to Intel CPU pricing. And you can see I have added the new 14 gen lock CPUs. I've combined them together. We'll talk about that in just a second and more in the news section. Let's talk about pricing on the 14 gen K side. That's the overclockable CPUs. Down a little bit, 549 to 543. I still think it's got to get moving on some of these price cuts here. $543 right now. Now, that's not terrible. It's about what the 7950X runs right now, but obviously the 7800X 3D, which is its real gaming competitor, a lot cheaper. The 14700K is actually a different CPU than the 13700K, unlike the 14900K and the 14600K, and it's got four more performance cores to it, so two thumbs up there. But it's basically the same price as the 13700K. $7 difference is all that separates it, so obviously you'd pick up this one instead for $392 with a $15 promo code. 14600K, basically the same price as the 13600K. If there is some separation at some point, maybe we'll recommend the 13600K over it. Otherwise, you might as well take the slightly better bin silicon for $5 more, $5 more, come on, man. And of course, it also has the AI overclocking feature. That's really all that separates them. We all know that 14 gen is really just 13 gen slightly binned higher. Let's jump into some of the more budget-oriented Intel CPUs. We're gonna skip over like the 13500, 13400, and the 13100. Those are all just recycled 12th gen CPUs. CPU, same with the 14th gen, 14th gen in air quotes. A 13400, folks, is just a recycled 12600K that doesn't run as fast. It doesn't run as fast and it's not overclockable. And I don't know why it costs 20 bucks more. It's totally insane. But let's talk about some of the more budget-oriented Intel CPUs that you might want to buy. The 12600K, $183 out there. Not, not a bad value, if, especially if you're looking for production-oriented stuff. Uh, maybe you get the K the K version, not the KF. The, K, the F just means it doesn't come with the integrated graphics. For gaming, not that big a deal. If you do any video production, that might make a small difference for you. Otherwise, pretty good value at 183. I love seeing the 12400, which is the Ryzen 5600 competitor. They're basically like for like on just about every test you can run out there. More at 139. I think it still needs to get a little cheaper out there because again, AMD has a better selection of motherboards, but you only need to buy one motherboard. You don't need to buy 20. So if you can find a really good motherboard deal, and there's a couple out there right now for B660s, this might be the CPU for you. And then the 12100, I don't know why that CPU has gone back up in price. It's a competitor for the Ryzen 5500 out there. $97, you know, it's not terrible. Uh, B660 prices do seem to have gone up a little bit though. So it kind of does hurt the overall value. Let's jump into the CPU news. We're gonna quickly punch through the performance of all the CPUs here as quickly as I can. Let's start off with the Ryzen 8000 series APUs. These are not next generation. Zen 5 based Ryzen CPUs. We expect the AMD will probably name those Ryzen 9000 at this point since they just named these 8000. And those we are expecting in the fall, in the fall of 2024. But in the meantime, they released Zen 4 based, that means Ryzen 7000 based. APU. So basically they took a Ryzen 7600 as an 8600G and they reduced the amount of cache and they added some graphics units. Unfortunately, that completely cripples the chip because on the one hand, the graphics performance isn't any better than a GTX 1650, not even a 1650 Super, an ancient graphics card. And you can buy it now by cheaper graphics cards, so you don't really need that. And when you do add in a dedicated graphic card, look at the performance. Nowhere near what the Ryzen 7600 is, and the 7600 you can pick up right now for like $200. So it just doesn't make any sense in this market. AMD either needs to massively adjust pricing on these, or just say, you know what? <laughs> these didn't work for the desktop market. We're gonna ship them all to mobile. AMD also released a number of Ryzen 5000 series CPUs that are a little bit more interesting, but let's quickly punch through them. 5500G T and the 5600G T are basically slightly overclocked versions of the Ryzen 5600G, a completely irrelevant CPU in 2024, given the weaker graphics performance of it, and they're at stupid prices, so we're not even going to talk about those right now. Basically, the Ryzen 5500, remember, is a 5600G with disabled graphics on it. It's a great budget CPU, less than $100, but will not compete with the Ryzen 5600, which despite the similarity in name, is actually a completely different architecture. That's also the problem with the Ryzen 5700. You think, oh, it's a 5700X. It's, no, it's a 5700G with disabled graphics cores, not even going to compete with the Ryzen 5600. It's significant 
significantly cheaper CPU. So we're not even gonna talk about these CPUs because I can't recommend them to anybody. But let's talk about the CPU that has people talking. And the CPU that has everyone talking is the Ryzen 5700X 3D 249, or as we saw, $247 right now. In terms of the performance, TechSpot found with an RTX 4090 1080p, kind of a crazy test, but sure. 132 average FPS, only about 5% behind the 5800X 3D and the Ryzen 7600. So two thumbs up there. Now for basically for $50 more right now, you can get that extra 5% for the 5800X 3D. Might make sense for some upgraders out there. We'll figure out whether or not this is actually a good brand new system build or primarily for upgraders out there later in the video. Let's round it out quickly with the performance level of the quote unquote 14th gen Intel locked CPUs that launched in January. 14th gen is just 13th gen, slightly clocked higher, slightly clocked higher. And a lot of these 13th gen CPUs on the lock side were just 12th gen CPUs that were actually in some cases clocked lower. Let's punch through what I mean by this. Let's start off with the ones, the i5, this is just the i5, the CPU everyone should get. We've got the i5 12600K on the left, the i5 13400 in the middle, and the i5 14400, which you're going to find out pretty quickly is the 13400 is actually a weaker version of the 12600K, and so is the 14400. And for some reason, these CPUs sell for 20 bucks more than the 12600KF, which is totally bonkers here. But let's take a quick look at it. Same number of total cores and threads here. Uh, 10 cores on each of them, six performance cores, four efficiencies, 16 total threads. But look at the base and boost frequencies on the 12600K significantly higher than the 13400 and 14400. Essentially in the same power package, if you look at the bottom there, the maximum turbo power, 150 watts for the 12600K, 148 watts for both the 14400 and 13400. So honestly, it doesn't make any sense that those CPUs actually cost more than the 12600K. The 12600K is a significantly better CPU. You're also gonna find similar things to the 14100, which is the i3. It's basically just a 12100F that's been slightly clocked higher, not really worth the insane price premium they're trying to change for that. Same with the 14. 500, actually that's probably the only one out there that may make a little bit of sense because it's 10 bucks cheaper than the 13500. In terms of gaming performance, basically these are all gonna perform around Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. So their competition is not really the 7600 Ryzen in terms of performance, even though they cost the same amount of money as a Ryzen 7600, kind of bonkers. Let's jump into the best gaming CPU 2024 and best production CPU 2024. This is the first time this year we've done it. If you're not familiar with how we do it, we basically take all the CPUs CPUs we've been talking about, we come up with the cost of the CPU and the cost of the platform, which includes RAM, includes the motherboard, includes the cooler. And then we divide those costs by their performance, both in gaming and in multi-core, multi-production workloads. And we tie them all back to an i3-12100. So that's percent of an i3-12100. Then we get the gaming price performance and the production price performance. Remember the spreadsheet is linked down in the video description. If you want to change, like for instance, the motherboards I'm using, the coolers I'm using, et cetera, et cetera, you can jump in there and do that. Quick note on the platform costs for 20 2024. Again, this is what we use to determine all of our costs of the platform. Uh, honestly, motherboard pricing down a little bit, except for the, for some reason, the cheaper B660 and B760 Intel motherboards kind of don't understand that. RAM's essentially unchanged, as are the coolers. So overall, the pricing's pretty good. Starting off with the best budget gaming CPU, and honestly, the Ryzen 5500 has kind of roared back to take first place here, given that it's back at $98. No, I've listed the 5500 GT, that's $125 CPU. Do not get that one, that is total crash, but I'm listing them together because I do expect those prices to come down together. i3-12100 is hurt a little bit this month by those B660 motherboard prices going up. I've also looked at Z690s, Yes, I know some of the Z690 boards are actually cheaper right now, the DDR4 ones, than some of the B660 motherboards. So if you do want to put together an Intel system, keep that in mind because it doesn't matter. Uh, the Z series boards are better, so buy a better board for cheaper if you can. But honestly, you could really go either way. The 5500 is not going to have PCIe Gen 4. I don't really think you need it, especially if you're putting together uh, something like this. And we're going with a cheaper B450 motherboard that also does not have that as well. Although they're about $80 and some of the B5 50 motherboards have even fallen lower. That said, the Ryzen 5600, kind of tough to beat here. If you want to spend about, you know, 50 bucks more basically on your CPU combo here, you can get a more performative CPU and it's going to get you a B550 motherboard with, yes, yes, in fact, PCIe Gen 4 can really set you up for the future here. Honestly, Intel, I love to see that i3-1200F continue to come down in price. 
really given the same performance, the fact that 20 bucks more, uh, both the B660 motherboard cost and the cost of the CPU really does hurt it. I'd love to see Intel just get super aggressive here. I don't understand. Same with the 12600K, but the price here of 183, it's just kind of a non-starter, $50 extra for not a lot more performance. You probably should be spending it on your GPU at this budget level. Moving over to the best mid-range production CPU in 2024. This is where the multi-core score is 170 and the price is $750 or greater was $700 last year. I've added $50 to these price categories just so you can see more CPUs at the bottom. It doesn't change price performance, just allows you to see more of the overall rankings here. And it looks a lot like last year, doesn't it? Intel continues to dominate this with their core heavy architecture and DDR4 RAM is king over DDR5. A lot of these processes don't benefit much from DDR5 given the price difference in price to performance. Remember, we're looking at price to performance here, not just raw performance. i7 1200K, despite $273, kind of silly price tag right now, dominating right now in terms of price to performance. 12600K, if you want to spend about 100 bucks less. Ryzen, where are you? Other than the 5700X, which barely has enough multi-core score to compete here, the Ryzen 7000 CPUs are not good value in terms of if you're looking for core heavy multi-threaded production workloads. We're not talking gaming. Remember, we're talking production <laughs> workloads out there. Yikes. Jumping over the best mid-range gaming CPU 2024. Look at that. Ryzen continues to absolutely spank Intel here. Intel just got to cut some prices out there, guy. Pat Gelsinger, get on the phone, start cutting some prices because the Ryzen 7600 is eating your lunch. Look at that. Look at the price of performance, $3.11. And let's talk a little bit about the 5700X3D. Does it make sense to build a brand new gaming system with that? I think given the fact it's only a $20 difference between $432 for the 5700X3D and for 20 bucks more for $454, you get a Ryzen 7600 that has future upgradability. I don't think the 5700X3D is a CPU that you wanna build a brand new system with. I think if you have AM4, if you've got a Ryzen 3000, 2000, 1000, heck, if you've got a Ryzen 5600 and you wanna upgrade a, to a much faster graphics card, I would consider the 5700X3D for sure, possibly the 5800X3D, because again, it's the last upgrade you're ever gonna make on that socket. Well, who knows with AM4, but otherwise it's really, it's rising, it's rising, it's rising. And the only way I think that like the 13600K or 14600K, which is pretty much identical price to performance there, is really if you also do a ton of professional level production work because any of these CPUs for an amateur is gonna do production work just fine. It's gonna do creator work just fine. It's gonna do streaming just fine. It's only if you like work 40, 50, 60 hours a week at a professional level that you even start to see the differences. So to me, Intel needs to cut some prices if they wanna be competitive in gaming. Jumping over performance production before we get to high performance gaming, which I know you're all waiting for, so we'll punch through this. This is where the multi-core score is 330 or greater. No price limit on this. Honestly, similar results to last year, except that cheaper Z690, Z790 quality motherboards out there, they've come quite down in price, and that's making the 14700K in terms of price to performance really kind of clearly lead for the first time, I think, ever. $1.78 versus $1.93. Now you can see Jason, that's true, but you know they're only $140 difference. You're gonna buy, probably buy $2 bazillion worth of storage anyway. So the cost differential is not that much when you consider the total system. I could see that and you can upgrade the 7950X in the future. Yeah, you're mostly that's gonna be the motherboard cost. It's the, the RAM, you're probably gonna need new RAM with a Ryzen 9000 or whatever they call it. So to me, you could really go either way here. These are effectively gonna be about the same in terms of their overall performance. I really don't love the 13900K, 14900K, too much power, too much cooling. Just you're gonna need a bigger power supply. It's gonna end up costing you money. This 7900, just not powerful enough for how much you're spending. The 7950X3D, a kind of an odd duck CPU. So I really do like either the 14700K or 7950X. Those would be my top choices. Jumping over the best gaming CPU 2024. So this is high performance where the gaming score is 160 or greater. And we have no, no price limit. And I'm trying to keep suspense here. I really am. But I think you already know the 7800X3, just absolutely demolishing anything that Intel has to throw at it. I will say I'm actually hampering the 7800X3D here because I'm requiring a 200 plus dollar B650 quality motherboard. If you want to look, you can check on what my requirements are for that. If you wanted to use more of a kind of entry level or mid-range board, you certainly could. You could save even more money and it would continue just absolutely destroy the 13700K, 14700K, 14. It doesn't matter. Intel needs to do something on their pricing because they have completely lost. Not only have they lost the gaming crown, they're not even competitive. Now I could see if you're somebody who's like Jason, but I also do 60 hours a week, you know, doing 
doing video editing and all this other stuff, so I want the 14700K. I would also say, you know, the 7800X 3D is an eight core CPU and it's super strong even in these workloads. So most human beings probably wouldn't notice the difference between the two, only like high-end professionals really would. So I would say that segment's pretty, pretty narrow out there. And I would recommend to most people, the 7800X3D is probably more CPU than you need. Don't overspend. Remember, spend that money on your graphics card. We have our best CPU GPU combo video coming very, very soon. We'll leave that link down in the video description once it comes out. I think uh, a couple of days after this one does. But right now, the 7800X3D, it's just hard to recommend anything other than that. You might be wondering why I don't like the 7900 X3D or 7950X3D, that's because only one of the CCDs on those CPUs, uh, they have two CCDs, only one of them has the V-cache on it, and sometimes they have trouble turning off the right CCD and you get kind of messy. So I don't like those CPUs. I think that was a good college try, but it has not worked out. I'd get the 7800X3D. It only has one CCD. That's the key here. Let's play everyone's favorite game. Should you buy now or should you wait? Well, uh, Honestly, what else would we be waiting for? We just got all the CPUs and I was kind of trying to tell you last year that, hey, I don't think anything coming out in the new year, including the GPUs that we got, which we talked about in our GPU market video, which I'll leave linked down in the video description if you want to jump into that, see what my recommendations are. We also just did our best GPU for gaming 2024 video where we go through like all the decision points, FSR versus DLSS and everything else, ray tracing, et cetera. Check those videos out. But what else are we waiting for? Because we're not going to get Ryzen 9000 Zen 5 based CPUs until later in the fall, more than likely. We'll get 15th gen Intel, whatever that turns out to be, who knows. Uh, and then, you know, in terms of GPUs, it's unlikely, it's possible we'll get some by the end of the year, but it seems more likely with all the hints that NVIDIA is dropping, we'll see the 5090 in quarter one of 2025. So really, there's nothing on the horizon other than Battle Mage, which again, I would not wait for. Fingers crossed that Intel can really pull it together for that, but don't wait for it. Don't wait for it. Build something now. The reason to build now also, storage price is going up. Storage has doubled and roughly doubled in price since Black Friday, and we're expecting it to go up another 40% over the doubled price. So that's yeah, that's going to start to get more expensive. We also do expect RAM prices to continue to climb. They've come up about $20 on some of the kits that I was recommending over the last couple months. So just expect those costs to continue to go up. And if you're ready to build and you're like, there's a lot of cool games coming now, don't wait for Prime Day. That's not until July. Man, I would build something right now. Take advantage of these really good prices and some of these like Black Friday-esque kind of deals that are still around. Everything is linked down in the video description, including the spreadsheet itself. Jump in there, change the numbers around, change the configurations around. And of course, if you got value out of this video, then definitely give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, since it is such a great time to build a gaming PC, we just put out a video on three amazing builds. Check this video out right here. $750 for 1440p, $1,200 for 1440p, 240 hertz, and an amazing $1,900 Godzilla 4K gaming PC. And we'll catch you on the next one.